using electric symbols. For instance, this bulb, we said we have a, 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 a circle and then you have that symbol that is a bulb or you have a circle and then you have a cross that is we call a bulb and for a cell we have a long stick a, a, a short one the long one is for the positive the short one is for the negative and then you have a connecting wire that and for the switch you have a, a, a wire then there is a, a gap then you raise one wire so that it, when the raised wire comes down it closes the circuit we say that it is switched off so then a connecting wire is represented by a straight line although physically they are never straight so whenever you see a straight line it means a connecting wires so when two wires connect like if i connect the two wires where they connect sometimes they you put a dot to show that there's a connector and when the two wires cross each other and they are not connected you just put a loop like that that means these wires are not connected but if i draw this wire and then i put a dot it means the two wires they are connected these wires are not connected so that's how you you draw a, a switch now these switches So whenever now you put the components together, you come up with what we call uh, a symbol circuit, which consists uh, of uh, the wires. We have those wires that can conduct current, that is copper wire, not another wire which can be used. Uh, then like now here, we have a cell. So these are positive, the longer one, the shorter one is the negative then we have a switch here then we have a lamp now this circuit uh, when you look at the arrow here shows the flow of current current is flowing means from the positive then coming into the negative so current is forming flowing from this positive coming down then all the way to the cell then coming in to the negative of the cell so current emanates from the positive part of the cell keep that in mind we are going to refer to it when i want to explain something now these are some of the symbols uh some gadgets you have them that when we have a cell we represent it with a long stick and a short stick those are strokes a positive and a negative a battery a battery no monomer contains more than one cell so because it contains more than one cell we are not going to draw several cells so you draw once one positive then one negative then you put a long dash meaning several cells then you continue this means this is a battery a battery is normally 12 volts but if i'm drawing two cells they must be close to one another these are two cells these are two cells but this is a battery so there is a, a long stick between the positive of one and the negative so these are two cells two cells here and this is a battery this switch a lamp as i told you uh, wires crossing with a connector wires crossing with no connector it means the two wires they are not connected so that wire will just be drawn using a loop they are not connected then we have a fixed resistor a variable resistor we have a fuse a, a rail start the one i showed you was called i told it was called a potentiometer uh, which serves the same as uh, a variable resistor we also have another one called a rail start then we have an ammeter galvanometer and a voltimeter uh, but I'm going to show you in, in terms of how they appear in the in the pictures. So what is this? What's an electric circuit? Now we have just come up with a, a circuit. And these circuits, we tend to 
we tend to give the meaning of a circuit why we are making a circuit but what is this uh, we call a, a circuit now as a re- an electric circuit it is a path or it's a way around which electric current flows through a conductor meaning an electric circuit must be comprised of a conductor therefore so this conductor forms a path and in this path it is through which current will flow meaning electric circuit is the path through which current flows through a conductor so we have various types of these circuits i want to refer to the circuits we made uh, uh, in uh, when we met we met to three circuits we met we made a, a closed circuit an open circuit we also made a short circuit these circuits it is striking i don't know let me try to now the 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 biro is as hungry to me just refresh it I'm sorry a bit I refresh it Okay, it's okay now. We can continue. Now, a closed circuit it means that the switch is closed and then the current can be able to flow. So in this case, when we talk of a closed circuit, the meaning is not Literally meaning that it is closed, that nothing is now, uh, nothing is now going through. What it means is that current can go through. So it's a circuit in which there is a flow of current. If it was a simple circuit, the the lamp is lighting. But closing, if it was a tap of water, if you close a tap of water, it means that. There is no flow of water, but for current, when you close a circuit, there is flow of current. Now, it means that this is different from what we can refer to uh, literally. Now, a closed circuit, that's a, an example of a closed circuit, the bulb is lighting. We have the bulb that is on the switch is closed we call it a closed circuit but if you have an open circuit there's no flow of current this can be caused by either loose connection i showed you how to make an, a connection of two wires but in this case if you have a loose connection or the switch is open we can call it an open circuit and this case 
there is no flow of current. Now, for instance, if you look at this circuit, the in this part, the switch is open, then the bulb is off. This is an open circuit. It means nothing is happening. And if you want to measure the voltage, actually we say this one has an what we call an EMF, not a voltage. This is an EMF because the circuit is open. But if you go back, To the closed circuit this one measures now the voltage the bd the potential difference so the closed circuit current is moving the bulb is working then what we have what to call a short circuit if we can take a, a, a literally the meaning of a short circuit is when you just bypass let's say somebody is going to a place and then there is a, a, a shortcut a shortcut is always is, is, is a path which is less in distance than the normal path so as i showed you that if the, we have a, a connection that's a loop and then you bypass another wire current will take the less route so that less route taken we call it a short circuit. So as you have given the current an option. Now, in this current, the current takes the part with lower resistance. So when we say the shortcut or the less distance, that is in the layman's language, that's literally. But in uh, current flow, we say that is a lower resistance. So current will always take a low le resisted path whereby there's no risk. If you have two wires, let's say you have a wire, or the reason why they say we say wire aluminum conducts current uh, more than copper, we say aluminum has three uh, dirocolized electrons. Copper has two. It means aluminum offers less resistance. That less resistance makes it a better conductor. So a better conductor gives a better conductor gives low resistance so resistance can be explained using in terms of conductivity that when you over less resistance you are a better conductor when you over more resistance you are a poor conductor therefore aluminium which has three drugs electron gives us uh, best results in the conductor because it offers less resistance that's why it is a better conductor now in this our this path it can be caused by conducting wires by an accident we normally the the wires are insulated if insulated wires by accident comes into contact they can cause a short circuit because current will f go through that place that is contact that's why we normally insulate wires to avoid if they are naked they can easily cause a short circuit so in this short circuit the, the, we can, we are not going to have a, a literally the, the the diagram because we may not for a shortcut come as a, as a result of an accident so whenever there is fire let's say there's an accident fire the reason why electricity is normally accused of causing electric electric uh, accident is when wires short circuit even the the KPLC wires, whenever they come together, they cause sparks. Those sparks come as a result of short circuit when more current is flowing in a short period of time over a short circuit also because there's low resistance being offered. Now, electric current, we have said that we are making a, 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 a electric circuit or a symbol circuit where current is going to fall through what is this current what is this current that is flowing what is the origin of current why do current flow now electric current actually is the uh, the flow of electrons and from chemistry electrons are charged so meaning the flow of electrons is the same as saying the flow of charges because an electron is charged Remember we say that uh, an atom is 
electrically neutral meaning that when we say it is electrically neutral it has the equal number of electrons as protons so these electrons when this atom is not stable it has either gained or lost once it has gained or lost it attains stability but now it has it is charged so a charged atom so when these electrons flow we can as well as say that charges are flowing because these electrons may be charged so current is the flow of electrons which can also be said is the flow of charges now these charges they they were invented by a guy called coulombs this guy so the SI unit of current of charges i mean is named after this guy coulomb so we say the SI unit for charges is coulombs but when current flows the SI unit is amphious that's where here we have a uh, capital a the SI unit is amphious that is current current but the SI unit for charges the charges which we give them assign q it is coulombs c the name of a person also current is named after the name of a person amphius so these are two guys the one who came up with current we named it uh then we named it after him amphius and the one who came up with the charges we named it after coulombs so those are the three guys we are going to look at them later now it means current is the rate when we talk of the word rate it means we are timing it the amount of charges that are going to flow at a given time so it means the quantity of charge divided by the time taken we get the current so current is the quantity of charges that have flowed or have passed through a conductor in a given period of time that means that the amount of charge the quantity of charge that has gone through a conductor in a given time is current so therefore we we define current as the rate of flow rate means time the rate of flow of charges so the mat mathematically we can say that current is just charge divided by time which is q charge divided by time whereby this is c and this is s the si unit that is now it means current is i q over t because the si unit is c that is coulombs per second we say coulombs per second that is the si unit for current or in other words instead of saying coulombs per second you can as well as say amphias let's look at the example calculate the amount of current flowing through a bulb if 300 coulombs of charge flows through it in 22.5 minutes we have said that si unit of time is seconds therefore we have been given minutes we cannot use minutes we must we must use seconds therefore we are going to convert minutes into seconds and by converting minutes into seconds we multiply by 60 therefore the calculation will be they want us to get current current is equal to charge divided by time but this time this is the same as this is the charge 
coulombs divided by 2.5 but we change it into minutes into seconds i mean by multiplying by 60 so we get it seconds such that when we do this that is 60 divided by 300 that is 5 then 2.5 divided by uh, 5 we get 2 so this gives us 2 coulombs per second or 2 amphias so it's either the two it's either two coulombs per second or two amphias so you can either use coulombs per second or you can as well as use uh, amphias so it means that whenever we calculate that's how we arrange our work then the other day we were looking at electromotive force and the potential difference the difference between now these both terms they refer to voltage across a cell in the circuit because the cell is the one which carries the voltage now emf is the voltage so therefore potential difference is the voltage and the emf is also the voltage therefore emf is the voltage across a connected the key term is connected to an open circuit so this circuit is open nothing is being used if the current if the voltage the cells is we have two cells that is 1.5 times 2 so it means we have three voltage so in an emf the voltage is not connected to an external it's open so this means the cell is not supplying the current so if it's not supplying the current it has not been used therefore it is exact as it is so in this case if we have but a potential difference pd is the voltage across a connected that's the difference it is a connect also it's a closed cell so in this in other words this cell is supplying current to the external circuit look at the diagrams the first diagram it is open circuit it is not supplying current it is 1.5 but the second diagram it is supplying the bulb is on and therefore the voltage has dropped to 1.45 so this is an open circuit we have the emf and here we have a closed circuit we have a potential difference that's the difference between an emf and a potential difference one is working another one is not working if you can use the layman's language explanation Therefore, the EMF is always higher than the PD. You can be asked, why is the EMF higher than the PDs? Because all of them refer to the voltage. But one is supplying current, the other one is no supplying. And if you are supplying, we expect it to, to drop because you are being you are using. Most of this we are going to look at the current two in uniform three but for now this is enough we also did some connection on a parallel and a series connection in cells so the in series connection it is connection that are connect end to end that the positive is connected to the negative of the other say we call it end to end connection for instance if that is a cell it is connected to another cell that's another cell this is a series connection in that we have that is the cell another cell another cell another cell those are the series connection series connection of cells in this case the emf is higher because 
if this is 1.5 1.5 this is 1.5 the total is 4.5 voltage it means the emf is higher now what happens this this gives us a higher emf because the total emf is the sum of the number of cells that is uh, present this is the most preferred connection in most experiment because it gives us more uh emf whenever you're doing an experiment what you want is the emf so if you want an emf of nine it means we have to use six cells so this is the most preferred because it can give what we want we can manipulate to give us what we want now when we use this kind of a cell connection in series the bulb is always brighter because more current is flowing. For instance, in this case, we have two bulbs that I connected. No, we have two cells connected in a series. So this means in this kind of connection, we have more EMF. Therefore, this is the most preferred connection. But in a parallel, instead of having end-to-end -end connection, we have side by side that is a cell that is another cell so that is the positive they are connected side by side and then we have another connection side by side then if you have a bulb here, that is parallel. Or we have, that's one cell. That's another cell. That's another cell. So the cells now, they are connected. That is parallel connection. So we don't have, we connect positive to positive negative to negative but in a series we connect positive to negative in parallel we connect positive to positive and negative to negative and before we go the link i made we were given 30 minutes it means at the end of 30 minutes it will cut and i will make another so i will send you another link so when this closes go to the gmail and then click on the another link because this one i'm see time is limiting we have now two minutes now when we connect in a parallel the emf is not affected even if we have a million plus cells the emf remains to be 1.5 so that means we if we have an experiment whereby we want six volts even if we are going to use a million cells there's no way we are going to have six voltage by this kind of connection therefore it's not preferred so the brightness remains the same whether you're using one cell a thousand cells so you cannot change the brightness of a bulb by adding cells because the total emf is the the emf of a single cell regardless of the number now the advantage of this is that current is applied for a long time that is the advantage so it it is not uh preferred but it has one advantage current is supplied for a long time so if six cells are going to supply 1.5 they can supply for even four days but if you put six cells to supply nine voltage a matter of minutes and all they are over so this one supplies current 
for so if you are asked can you design an experiment or an a circuit whereby you want to supply current for a long period of time you go for the parallel kind of connection now we also have parallel connection of the bulbs for example this is a series connection of bulbs whereby each bulb follows another they're like in a queue from the previous experiments is that these cells these bulbs they just depend on one another if one of them is faulty all of them are faulty and then they are not never bright for example in this connection the same current flows Hello?
Okay, let us continue. <clears throat> In the case there is a change in voice, you can as well as inform me. You now maybe when we change, there is a... Now, in a series connection, the same current flows through the devices connected in the series because they are following each other, meaning the same current is going to flow in each. But when one bulb is disconnected, others go off. That is the disadvantage of this kind of connection. So it is not preferred in the most uh, real life connection because one goes off, it affects all others. Now, for the case of bulbs, they light the brightness is less as this offers higher because one bulb offers resistance to another bulb. So remember, each bulb uh, contains a resistant wire, meaning one is a, one bulb offers resistance to the other bulb, meaning the bulbs will not be uniformly bright. Others will be less bright than that because they offer resistance to each other. Now, because meaning that if we have four bulbs and the three bulbs gives resistance to the fourth one, it means it will be having a high resistance and therefore less or no flow of current. Others may be dim, others bright. Now, then we have parallel connection of bulbs. And when I talk of bulbs, in real life, it can be parallel connection of devices in the house, can it be TV, can it be a fridge, can it be fan, such that if maybe you have those kind of connection in the house, and maybe one device is not working, maybe you switch off the TV, it means the fan cannot work. So that means there's no way we're going to have a kind of serious connection in a real life situation. That is in our houses, domestic wiring. Therefore, current in one device does not affect the current in the other devices. They are independent. So when one device causes an open circuit, current still flows to the others. We're going to see in the diagram. Now, this is a kind of parallel kind of connection. Let me obtain an let me where I took my bio. This here. Now, in this case, this is current can you flow here and the bulb is working. Even if, even if this one is not there, current can still flow here. Even if this is not there, current can still flow, meaning they don't depend on each other. Even if you remove this one, current can still flow in the circuit. That is uh, a kind of connection which is preferred in most uh, real life situation. So this connection is preferred in domestic electrical wiring because in the case of bulbs can be switched on and off independent. Let's say you are switching off the security light. It does not mean the light in the main house is going to be off so they are not dependent they are independent let's say one bulb goes faulty others can work so that is the most preferred type uh, of connection and also bulbs are brighter because there's less resistance they don't depend on each other each bar each bulb or device takes current from the source independent. So therefore, they are not like series whereby each bulb takes current, then it passes to the other one. Meaning, once the first one has taken the current, it provides the resistance to the next bulb. But in this case, each bulb has access to the PD or to the EMF direct. 
therefore doesn't depend on other bulbs so that there's no resistance. So this makes all the bulbs to be uniformly bright because there is less resistance to the flow of current. Now, what are these sources of electricity? We have various sources of this electricity. We have chemical cells, generators, solar cells. These are the ones they use. Uh, chemical cells, I'm going to explain the chemical cells. And then we have generators. That's the main AC and DC generators, the one we have. We have solar cells, the one that they use sun, majorly. And now we start with the chemical cells. Is this they transform chemical energy into electrical energy? And when you talk of chemical energy, it means they are having chemicals. For instance, a dry cell. Let me just show you one. This is ever ready. This inside, we have various chemicals. We have a carbon rod. We have manganese oxide. We have potassium chloride. We have carbon. So these are chemicals. We have zinc. So these are chemicals. So when these cells, this cell is providing, is changing these chemicals into electrical energy, we call it a chemical cell. So we also have these chemical cells, they are divided into two. We have a primary chemical cell and a secondary chemical cell. So this FRAD, it is a primary because once you use it, you cannot recharge it. We call it a primary cell. The one we use in the remote. For example, this is a remote. So this remote, it uses cells. It has two cells, dry cells. Now, when you look at this, when these cells, they are used, you buy another unit of cells. You don't reuse them. We call them primaries. So these are dry cells because we, do, they are, we don't have any liquid inside. So we have just dry chemicals. Then we have secondary cells. Secondary cells, these are cells which can be recharged. For example, a, bat, a car battery cell. Once it has been used, you can recharge it and reuse them. So we call them rechargeable cells. Remember, we also have, like now, this Wi-Fi. It has a cell inside. So once it is, it is charged, it has a cell. This cell for this Wi-Fi, we call it a rechargeable cell, but it's a dry cell because there's no liquid inside. So these cells cannot be recharged. After use, you throw them. The chemical action in a cell, they work by being eaten away. They end. They're like person who is eating food. When you eat food, we expect to clear the plate. So when these dry cells, these primary cells are used, they're eaten away. Now, examples of a cell we have... <coughs> Uh, of course, most of these cells, they are obsolete. In the same one is a kitambo, they are not used. We have what we call a simple cell. We have what we call a Leclanger cell, a dry cell. We have others we call Daniel cell, Philip cell. There are several of them. So, for instance, this is a, a cell, which a simple cell that contains a carbon rod, zinc. So, we must have carbon and zinc. And then they are showing uh, electron flow. The electrons are already in the zinc and they are flowing towards the carbon, which is the positive. Now, electrons, these are conductors which allow current to pass through and also they receive the current. So,
So the retros are like a gate. It's through them. For example, when I look at, let me find a cell. Let me use the cell for the remote. Like now this cell, current comes from this end, goes and enters from the other end. So this part, inside we have to wear an electrode. So the electrode is that conductor, whereby current leaves and then returns to the electrode. Electrolyte is a liquid which allows current to pass through and then it is decomposed by that current. So from this electrode, current will enter the electrolyte and then current will leave the electrolyte. So that's what we call an electrode. So we have two types of electrodes. We have the positive electrode and the negative electrode. The positive electrode is called the anode and the negative electrode is called the cathode. For example, for this cell, the negative one is the zinc and the positive one uh, is the carbon rod. And then the, zinc, the positive one, we have said it is the anode and the, then the negative is the cathode. Electro is just a solution, electrolyte, but it's not just solution like water, it's a very thick solution. But it can be thick, it can be a solution like water. But what it does, it allows current to, for example, an acid. An acid allows current to pass through it. We say that is an electrolyte. So an electrolyte is that solution which allows current to pass through them. And then that's where we dip our electrodes to allow current to enter and to leave that electrode. Now, for instance, in most car batteries, they use sulfuric acid as an electro electrolyte because it offers good conductivity. And then we have to look at the, a good example of an uh, electrode. Uh, these simple cells, whenever they work inside, we have how do a simple cell work? So current flows, current is the movement of electrons that we said. And the electrons move from the zinc the electrons move from the zinc to the positive, so the negative one, because this negative is also written here negative, meaning electrons, which are the negative, move from this zinc towards the positive. That's the flow of electrons. I won't say the flow of current, the flow of electrons. Flow from the negative zinc to the positive, which is the carbon. So, electrons flow from this part, zinc, to the carbon. This is the carbon. This, this head is made of carbon. And this behind is made of zinc. So, electrons, which are negatively charged, flow from the zinc to the carbon. Now, when this... When this flow, when now the flow occurs from the negative to the positive, it means electrons are going to be fewer in the zinc because zinc is giving out. Therefore, they are going to be fewer here. Because, and then excess in the carbon part because they are going to come from the zinc to the carbon part. Therefore, electrons are going to be fewer in the zinc and the more in the carbon. And remember, Inside the cell, we have hydrogen ions, which are positively charged. So these hydrogen ions, they are attracted to the negative charge that has come, has come from the zinc. So here, the hydrogen cell, which are positively charged and they are present in the carbon, they are attracted to the negative electrons which have come from the zinc. Therefore, we have an attraction between the positively charged hydrogen ions and the negatively charged electrons that have come from the zinc plate. Then there is an attraction. Now, the negative charge is caused by the excess electron, of course. Now, the zinc electrode has a positive charge because the lost electrons to the carbon, it has lost. The zinc, remember, zinc has lost electrons to the carbon. Therefore, once it has lost electrons, it remains positive. Remember, when you lose, you become positively charged. 
Therefore, the zinc has lost electrons to the carbon, and those electrons have gone to be attracted by the hydrogen ions there. And now the zinc, which is remaining, is now positively charged. Now, this zinc, which is positively charged, attracts the negative ions from the sulfuric acid. So zinc is positively charged. Now attracts the negative ions from the now our electrolyte, which is zinc. Remember, zinc now has a sulfate. A sulfate, uh, zinc has a hydrogen ions and a sulfate ions. Now the sulfate is negatively charged and the zinc is positively charged. Remember, the hydrogens are going to be attracted to the electrons that have gone to the carbon. And now the zinc now which has become positively charged is being attracted to the negatively charged sulfate ions. Now, this will combine, zinc now will combine with the sulfate and then we end up forming zinc sulfate. So in this case, we are going to have zinc sulfate being formed at, at the negative plate. Zinc sulfate is going to be formed. Now, when this process occurs, we have now the defects. So these cells don't stay for long. For example, when they stay in the remote for long, they start being wet. And then they start uh, showing some brown depots that is rusting. What is the cause of this rusting? So we have two very uh, major defects. One is called the local action. Another one is called polarization. Now, the local for, remember we have said that we have hydrogen so the formation of hydrogen ions around the copper electrode, that's the anode we have the hydrogen bubbles when the bubbles formed here they form a barrier they block the flow of electrons therefore they like they offer resistance to the cell so therefore this formation of hydrogen bubbles in the copper electrode barring electrons from flowing is a defect. This also, this cell cannot provide the EMF because where is the EMF going to flow from? So this is a major setback to the flow of current. Now, this is a, a defect. How do we minimize this? This one is prevented by, inside this cell, they have put a depolarizer. So this, if the, the, this defect of forming gas bubbles at the copper electrode, which is going to prevent the flow of electrons, is called polarization. So for you to prevent polarization, you add a depolarizer. That's manganese dioxide, manganese four oxide. Manganese four oxide provides oxygen to the cell, and this oxygen is going to react with the hydrogen to form water so we are not going to have bubbles at the end instead we are going to have water remember bubbles they form a barrier so instead of forming bubbles here we add a depolarizer actually manganese is a, an oxidizing agent it's going to provide more oxygen to the cell and this oxygen is going to re react with the hydrogen which has been formed to form water so we are going to have water and this water is going to even dilute the electrolyte. So the electrolyte is not concentrated because we are forming water that is diluting the electrolyte. So we have the second defect which is called the local action. We say that at the back end here we have zinc plate. Now remember we say that the zinc when they become positively charged they get attracted to the sulfate ion from the sulfuric acid meaning the zinc plate is being eaten away once it is being eaten away by the end we are not going to have the zinc here because it will disappear it's being eaten away by the acid so this being eaten away is what we call the local action being eaten away is we call called the local action and this is normally caused by the impurities in sulfur. Sulfur, when it's being mined, it's not pure. It's in, in pure. How do we minimize sulfur from being eaten away by the sulfuric acid? One way is using pure sulfur. If you use pure sulfur, there are less chances of it being eaten away. Second, we do what is called amalgamation. Amalgamation is making, mixing sulfur with mercury. Mercury will coat 
remember mercury is not a reactive metal so mercury is going to cover or to coat the zinc therefore zinc is not going to be exposed to sulfuric so therefore it's not going to be eaten away so those are the two metals we use to prevent so we have two metals uh defects or disadvantage we have polarization the formation of gas bubbles in the carbon electrode copper electron which prevents which provides resistance and this is called polarization and is prevented by adding a depolarizer and in this case we use manganese for oxide because it's a strong oxidizing agent it provides more oxygen to the hydrogen and the hydrogen and the oxygen combine to form water and this water comes to dilute the electrolyte which is very good another defect of this cell is the zinc being eaten away because when electrons flow from the zinc to the anode the zinc becomes positively charged and this positive charge is attracted to the sulfate ion which is negatively charged they form zinc sulfate by that zinc disappears to the solution it's being eaten away to prevent this zinc from being eaten away we use pure sulfur one way one reason why zinc is eaten away is because it's not pure for you to avoid it being eaten away you use a pure sulfur then you also amalgamate amalgamation is like protecting coating so you use mercury mercury is used to amalgamate sulfur this makes it not to be uh, uh not to be eaten away by the zinc electrolyte so we also have another cell called leclanger cell is a special type of a symbol cell but the what makes it special is that the two defects which affect the symbol cell have been minimized it, it means in this cell we are not going to have polarization we are not going to have a local action how has this been done what they have done they have surrounded the the carbon rod with manganese actually this is one we can say an improved cell in this cell they have if you cut open this so you find that the carbon rod is not open there's a paste surrounding the carbon rod that paste is like petroleum jelly that's manganese oxide so it is preventing another way so they have just added <coughs> a depolarizer direct here to that's how they have improved this cell they have also dipped the manganese in ammonium chloride so, so inside this cell you will find ammonium chloride cell this symbol cell improved one so this is like acting like uh to it's going to provide a long rival to a symbol cell so the zinc is not open to be eaten away it is protected by ammonium chloride and the this the positive is protected by magnesium for oxide by that one the like lancer cell it is it, it it is the lifespan is prolonged when you compare it with the the area cells then we have now the real one, the one which we are using nowadays, the dry cell, the one which I've shown you, the one in our remote, the one in our uh, spotlight. It's an improved of the two. So it's an improved of the Reclanger cell, it's an improved of the symbol cell. That's what we call the dry cell. It has also has manganese uh, electrolyte, which is ammonium chloride. Remember, ammonium chloride prevents zinc being eaten away. Then we have a depolarizer which is a, a strong oxidizing agent which is magnesium for oxide therefore that's why then inside when you cut open you find a, 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 a carbon powder a carbon powder it increases the positiveness remember the positive item here is the carbon rod so we add the powder to increase the working effect of the carbon rod that's where we have a powder remember a powder is crushed therefore it increases the surface area so that's where a powder works better than a solid because the powder is crushed in increasing the surface area of the action this actual this cell now the one the one on the screen so we have the copper the 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 head the head is this where we we call the positive and then this carbon rod the one which is going to be the positive the carbon rod it is surrounded by magnesium by powdered carbon to increase the effectiveness of the carbon rod and then the carbon it is mixed with the manganese for oxide remember manganese for oxide is a depolarizer it's a, a strong oxidizing agent which is going to prevent polarization by providing 
oxygen which is going to combine with hydrogen producing the positive part and form water. And then we have a, the post, the ammonium chloride paste, which is also acting like preventing the zinc plate, which we said is being eaten away by the electrolyte. So the ammonium chloride paste prevents local action and the magnesium oxide prevents uh, polarization. So meaning this one, rarely does it, is it affected by the two defects of uh, of a symbol cell. So whenever you see a cell, you have bought a cell, you have put in the remote and the cell is wet. No, that is the action, uh, one of the defects uh, that is happening. So the hydrogen gas produced is oxidized to water, making the cell wet. So when you touch these dry cells, these are dry cells, but when you find them wet, it means the hydrogen is being oxidized. That is the essence of adding a depolarizer. Then uh, in this case, we also have the secondary cell. These cells can be recharged. They, it means when they work, they get discharged and then you can recharge them. So the process of recharging them is adding them power. We call them charging. And when they work, they discharge. So we also call them wet cells because they use liquids. A good example of the secondary cells is lead acid accumulator. Another name for lead acid accumulator is the car, the car battery. Most of them use acid. Most of the chloride, uh, lead chloride oxide, it is using uh, sulfuric acid. Then we have nickel, cadmium, silver, zinc, and silver cadmium. Actually, these are found cells. This, this, the, this, the one I've shown you for the uh, Wi-Fi, the one that you see in the phones, those are nickel, cadmium, and the silver cadmium. They are second because they can be recharged. So they are most reliable and easily portable. When you consider a nickel cadmium cell, the cell of a phone, it is easily uh, rechargeable. Now these cells, they should, they must be maintained. For example, a, a, a car battery cell. How do we maintain a car battery cell? When you look at that, when you look at this, the battery of a car, inside we have an acid. And that acid, when they, that level of the, uh, now we don't call it a sulfuric acid, we call it electrolyte. We should always check the level with this, a line for the minimum and a line for the maximum. You should check the level. And if the level goes down, don't add an acid. You add water, distilled water. Some people, when the car battery acid goes down, they add another acid. They kill it. You, we, when the level of the electrode goes below the plates, we have the plates inside. You are not supposed to see the naked plates. The electrolyte or they are supposed to cover them. So as you use them, remember the electrode disappears. So you are supposed to add water, distilled water. We call it topping. Not the acid. Don't Add the, you are not increasing the effectiveness of the battery by adding, the, you are killing it. So when the levels go down, we normally top, the process is called topping. We top with the distilled water. And whenever it goes down, we should recharge it. Recharging is a must. And we should also check the density of the liquid. It should not go beyond, below 1.12. That's the density of the liquid. Now, this car battery, we should not withdraw a lot of current from them for a long period of time. So if you have a car battery, don't use it for 24 hours. You are drawing a lot of current for a long time. You are killing the cells. So if you want it to stay longer, draw a small amount of current within a short... For example, you are having a, a, a bus. You are using this for music, very heavy music. You are using it for lights. Others have screens in the in the, in the bus. You are using it for a uh, siren. You are using it for uh, that is uh, another thing they use for that is flashlights. So you are overusing the cell. Overusing the cell 
is as if is when you are connecting a lot of devices to this battery you are drawing a lot of current for a long period of time at the end you kill it it should not be left discharged if it is does not have the charge don't leave it for a long time because it will suffer what you call sulfation so it will be charged immediately it is over don't store it uncharged if you want to store it charge it then store it don't store it discharged it will it something we call sulfation will take place and that is dangerous don't short suck some people when they want to see wh whether the battery has current they just put the terminals together using wire that is short circuiting don't short don't overcharge if the current going there is 50 and it's 50 stop there do not overcharge overcharging does not increase its lifespan it has the terminals where we grip the we have the two terminals those terminals should be oiled or should be glazed kept clean and always oiled and greased should not be having end rust then whenever you store it do not place it direct on the ground place some boxes place some piece of wood and place it on top don't place it direct to the ground whenever you are storing now we also have the the the, the, the normal one the alkaline cell the one for the phones the the one which we use for the phone unlike the car battery cell the one for phone you can withdraw a lot of current they can be kept this of course it's not a must to charge a, a a phone battery you can keep it discharged but a car battery you cannot keep it discharged so these cells for phones they can be kept discharged for a long period of time and again they don't have those maintenance costs they are portable for example if you are working with a phone you are working with a portable with alkaline zinc cadmium or alkaline cadmium cell they are easy to carry the lower maintenance you can store them and discharge and you can withdraw some people are using that cell they're chatting sending messages they are playing games so you are withdrawing a lot of current within a short period of time the cell is surviving so it means it has meant to do so but you cannot do that with a, a secondary cell this advantage is that they are very expensive and then they they give you a lower emf like this this the cell of a phone it is giving an emf of 3.7 volts most of them 3.7 now they are making five five is a very little volts unlike a car battery which wants 12 volts some buses that are having heavy even charging system they're using up to 24 they have two batteries 12 12 others 24 24 48 volts meaning you you, you how many cells of the phone are you going to carry to have the same like three volts 24 cells eight cells 12 just one bit it means that they, they they give you lower emf but again they are very expensive now they are used in hospitals ships buildings that most alkans are used in buildings that need uh emergence like a lift a lift they use these cells for emergency not as an alternative when there's no electricity for emergency not as an alternative when you don't have uh, electricity from KPLC. they are used for emergency in the case of an emergency that's when we use academium cells so that is it for today unless you have a question i'm going to allow questions If you have a question, let me allow it. In the case you have a question over what we have shared, I 